Wolf Den Podcast time. Will. Yes, Bob. How are you? How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Welcome back. Oh, well, thanks. I'm not actually show. back. I know. Yes, I can see that you are not in your usual location. I'm not. You are somewhere else. It might sound and look look bizarre. I am I am yeah. at Hannah's right now. There might be a a, a a a little tiny dog coming through the door and interrupting us at any moment. Yes. Speaking of little <laughs> tiny dogs, uh, does anyone in the audience and my esteemed co-host know what this is? <laughs> that is from Ghostbusters. Yes. Uh, specifically, this is the character of Zool, and this is my daughter's new best friend. <laughs> Why? First She's of all, my dis- we started streaming, and you sound so much worse. I don't know what happened. I, I don't know. I thought I think my mic clipped out. <laughs> and why does she like that? Well, she likes dogs. She, she got into my display case where I keep all my Ghostbusters toys, and now she can name all of them. And her favorite characters are Sigourney Weaver. And the scary looking dog. <laughs> so okay, there you go. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I think I think maybe the bandwidth of the stream just sucked all of the bandwidth out of Discord. Maybe I don't know because I look fine in Discord, but I look like I'm on a Game Boy Color video on the. I'm gonna the- intentionally the- make you. A uh, much lower resolution. How do okay. I do that? Anyway, uh, thanks for being here, guys. This is the first podcast. We we uh, we skipped a week, and now we're here. Yes. Uh, and yes. we'll be back to the regular scheduled, uh, 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 higher quality podcast next week. Uh, this yeah. week, uh, I just I wanted to do the podcast, but I didn't want to go home. So, <laughs> so suck it. Um. There, since we skipped a week, there is a lot to talk about. Yes. Uh, the Most main, of it from the week we missed. <laughs> yes. So last week, uh, big news that Sony is up in the price of their PlayStation 5. So we yes. wanted to, but we wanted to talk about that because I feel like we got a lot to say about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, some other stuff. Uh, Logitech's new gaming handheld just got leaked, and we might get a little cease and desist for talking about that. <laughs> uh, the Nuvo DRM is like it's like a generic DRM service that you could just put in your game. Uh, well, yeah. now it has not generic, but it's like the number one DRM service for PC games, and they are coming after the Switch. Yes, kind of. Uh, and there's a lot of other stuff that we should probably talk about, but it's a new month. Yes, which means we get free games if you are subscribed to PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live Gold. Of course. Yes. Now, now Will, you're going to have to do a lot of talking while I figure out what's wrong with your audio. Okay. All right. So, yes, of course, it's the start of a new month, which means if you are subscribed to either PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live Gold, uh, you get free games. And, of course, now that everybody and their mother has a uh, subscription streaming service, we will include that in the discussion as well, especially because PlayStation does it for us. So, this month, for PlayStation Plus Essentials, that is the basic PlayStation Plus tier, uh, that everyone should have starting last week uh, you get no wait starting today starting today you get Need for Speed Heat on the PS4 you get uh, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus on the PS4 and you get Toem a photo adventure on the PS5 Toem's that black and white uh, photography game. Yes. That's a cute little thing. Now you can play it for free. That's pretty cool. Yeah, cute little take pictures of stuff like Pokemon Snap, only hopefully not boring. Right. Uh, And Need for Speed Heat, uh, of course, one of the more recent entries in the Need for Speed series. I've heard that one's actually pretty good if you're into racing games, so I'm going to give that one a shot. When When did Need for Speed Heat come out? Uh, I want to say at the beginning of that, not the beginning, beginning of that generation, but towards the beginning of that generation. 2019. 
So in the middle of the generation. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then coming to PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium uh, later this month, Deathloop on the PS5. That was oh, PS5's shit. big... Uh, oh, PlayStation Plus big, Premium. Like, exclusive game. Yeah. That makes sense. We're into the extra. We're, we're into the extra and premium right, uh, category right, now. Right. Uh, Deathloop, of course, is a Bethesda title that was re- uh, in development before the Xbox acquisition, and was put on the PS5 because it was still part of a Sony exclusivity deal. And I am shocked that it is going into PS Plus and not Game Pass. Uh, yeah, that is weird. Well, I guess, yeah. yeah, so it's still, wait, has it been a year since the game came out? Pretty sure it has, yeah. Death Loop release date. Uh, September 14th. So, we're coming up give on Give it a couple here. days, and <laughs> you might end up seeing it on Game Pass as well. True. That, that would be interesting. That means that Sony's intentionally doing this to 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 cut ahead of the inevitable Game Pass. Uh, and that, that means that that's Microsoft the was right. They are trying to pay people not keep their put their games in Game Pass. Right, right, right. Uh, also coming this month to PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium: Assassin's Creed Origins on the PS4, Watch Dogs Two on the PS4, Dragon Ball Xenoverse Two on the PS4. Spirit Fairer Farewell Edition on the PS4, uh, Chikori, A Colorful Tale on the PS4, Monster Energy Supercross, the official video game 5 on PS4 and PS5, uh, Alex Kidd and Miracle World DX on PS4 and PS5, Rabbit's Invasion, the Ooh. interactive TV show on PS4, Rayman Legends on PS4, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World on PS4. Jesus Christ. Uh, and then we got the premium classics. Uh, these are, of course, the older games that are only available on the top tier premium. Siphon Filter 2, The Sly Collection, Sly Cooper Thieves in Time, uh, Bentley's ha- uh, Hack Pack, Toy Story 3, uh, and Kingdom of Paradise. Um, I think I've been, I've been messing. I finally found where I can mess around with your uh, video quality. And okay. I don't know if I helped or hurt it, but I'll be playing around with that <laughs> throughout the podcast. Okay. Um, cool. All right. So I was actually talking to my friend who doesn't play a lot of video games. Uh, he has a PlayStation 4. And we were at a game right. store that was selling everything for 50% off. Everything at the oh. store was was closing. Um, it's a store in uh, Vegas. I forgot the name of it. It's a retro game was store. It, was it the one we went to or no. is it a new one? It's a different one. Okay. Uh, but they're closing. So everything was 50% off. They had a lot of garbage. But right. they had a PS4 section. He was like, I'm just going to buy a bunch of stuff because I it's cheap and, and I have a PS4 and that's it. Mm-hmm. And then he picked up a bunch of games and I was like, actually, you could just get PlayStation Plus Premium and you could play all those games. You don't have to buy every single one of them. He's like, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like it ends up being a good deal. Yeah. I think you might have to. I think you might get locked into a subscription, though. If you do it that way, you can pay, but you uh you can pay monthly. Okay. For it, so you can like try it for a month, and if he doesn't like it, you can stop. Is that for real? I thought you had to get locked into a year. No, I think that's only if you had you had a previous subscription going into it. Okay. But I think now, I mean, he probably didn't have a subscription to regular PlayStation Plus. No. So he could just buy a month of it and okay. see how he likes it. Interesting. Uh, I'm going to leave and come back. Hold on a second. Bye, Will. Hi. How's everybody? That didn't help. Hold on a second. <laughs> Beep. Boop. No, don't open the app. See, that's the problem. I'm using the browser. Login failed. Cool, dude. Oh, God damn. It's going great. It goes good when you do the podcast, uh, not in not in not in your normal usual setup. Anyway, my trip's been good. Uh, okay, 
lost that day. I went to Vegas. Then I went to uh, then I went to PAX. I'm gonna have a whole video on my little PAX time. Up the series because it should still be good. Hey, welcome back. Hello. Oh, uh, you look better. Yay! <laughs> oh, you sound better. Yay! It worked. All right, I might have to do that a couple times. Uh, anyway, uh, now we're on games of gold. Yes. Uh, okay. So for the entire month of September, you get God's Will Fall, uh, on Xbox One, and Double Kick Heroes from t September sixteenth to the fifteenth to October fifteenth on Xbox One. Now, yes. In case you've forgotten, I forgot. This is the final month that Microsoft will be offering Xbox 360 games in Games with Gold. Oh. And the final two games that they will be offering are Thrillville from now into the 15th and the very last Xbox 360 game on Games with Gold will be Portal 2 from the 16th to the 30th. I think Portal 2 is a fine game to end off on. Portal 2 is an excellent game. Yes. To end on. It is one of the best games of that generation. One of the best games ever, yes. really. Um, it's been a lot of duds, but I think they finally picked a good one to say, hey, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, that's uh, uh, I've recently started playing it with Hannah. I started playing the multiplayer. There you go. Uh, I don't know if I would have uh, played it on Xbox had I known about this. So this is backwards compatible, I'm assuming. Yeah, you can play it on Xbox One and Series X and S. That's great. I think yeah. everybody needs to experience Portal Two at some point because even the, yeah. the single player is great, but it has a very unique multiplayer uh, as as well. Yeah. Uh, what's Double Kick Heroes? That sounds familiar. Uh, Double Kick Heroes, the pure power of metal compels you. Travel to the post-apocalyptic freeways, battling zombies in, and militia, and your tricked-out Cadillac, the Gundalak. It's a wild game that combos a shoot 'em up with a rhythm game. Rhythm game, bang your head with your band through thirty levels of madness and heavy, heavy metal. All right, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, that it, it's uh, yeah, it's a rhythm game where you shoot zombies. Yeah. Uh. It looked like I've heard of this game and I remember this concept, but this looks very different from what I remember it being. Yes. Yeah, it doesn't look uh, that complicated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought there'd be a lot more going on. I guess this is the beginning of the game that I'm looking at right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, what about uh, Xbox Game Pass? Oh, we have that here. Game Pass as a separate article. Because they want you to know that Game Pass is separate from Games with Gold. Right, 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 uh, right. You get Disney's Dreamlight Valley, the Founders Edition. Uh, this is a day one on Game Pass. Mm -hmm. This is like, uh, I forgot the name of the the genre of games this is. But this is like one of those laid back, wholesome games where you just relax and you just do whatever you want in it. It, it looks like um, the, the it looks like Animal Crossing, but the villagers are all Disney characters. Which yeah, basically. there's a certain type of person who's gonna love that. Yes. <laughs> uh I think Jackson was looking at that or he might end up playing it. I, I think all of the I think the character you play, uh if you're playing as a woman, huge mm. butt. <laughs> and like it looks like it was developed intentionally that way. But anyway well, uh, that's how Disney gets you. They lure you in with the idyllic characters and all of a sudden, sex out of nowhere. Yeah, they slap you with it. Uh, also available starting today is uh, Opus Magnum. Uh, that's on PC. And Train that? Sim World 3. And coming soon, later this month, is Ashes of the Singularity, Escalation, uh, DC League of Super Pets, The Adventures of Crypto and Ace. Uh, you suck at parking. <laughs> I do. Um, Despot's game, Metal Hellslinger. Uh, yeah, and then Grid Legends on EA Play and a bunch of DLC. Terrible month for Game Pass. <laughs> Absolutely hey, man. abysmal month for Game Pass. Hey man, Disney's Dreamlight Valley is going to be somebody's <laughs> game of the year. Uh, you suck at parking. Looks pretty cool. 
Yeah. I don't really know how to describe it. A, a platformer with cars. <laughs> <laughs> it looks it looks pretty cool. It looks like mm-hmm. it's worth checking out. Uh, otherwise, all these I've never heard of any of these games. Disney's Dreamlight Valley is the only game I've heard of. And, and yeah. if you asked me what the name of the game was, I would have not been able to tell you what it was. If you said that Disney Animal Crossing game, I would have been like, oh, yeah. Uh, otherwise, trains. I love trains. <laughs> not going to try that out, though. Uh, and Super yeah. Pets. Did you say Super Pets? Yeah. Do we know anything about this game other than it's a movie tie-in? Uh, I think that's all we know about this game is that it's a movie tie-in. We haven't had a movie game in a long time. I know. Like like Usually, this type of movie game, like 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 a Lego game is like different, but this is like well, yeah, because I mean nowadays the movie based games go to iOS and Android because that's what all the kids play games on. Nobody makes full AAA console games for kids movies anymore. Have you seen this? Like the trailer, the movie, the trailer. Oh, the game. No, I have not. It looks like Superman sixty four. <laughs> it does. What? what why? Would they do this? Who thought that was a good idea? <laughs> all right, well. Anyway. Jeez, uh, that's yeah. that's all the games you can get on your game services now. Yes. If you are subscribed to any of them, go get them. Anything if interesting not, on Amazon Prime, though? Prime Gaming usually has has some oh, I don't good know. stuff. Um, did I find the right thing? Uh, Prime status on Twitch, no. I don't know. Amazon does not make it easy to look for <laughs> game no. stuff. Uh, free in-game content, free games. Also, this month happens to be uh, 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 September on Twitch. Oh. So, well, you know, right? You can, if, if you have Amazon Prime, you can link it to your Twitch account, and then you get a free Twitch subscription, and you could support us. You can give us basically like $3. For free, it doesn't yeah. cost you anything. It just supports us. And you have to do that every month. It, do, it doesn't re- auto-renew. But uh, this month, you get 30% off a sub if you don't have Amazon Prime. And if you want to gift subs, I think you get money off. Something like that. I don't know. It's weird. It used to be half off. Uh, there, It seems like Twitch is taking more and more away, f- away from us. But uh, there's some sort of deal right now. If you want to pay for a sub or gift subs or something, there's some sort of deals going. So September is the month to do that stuff. Anyway, uh, here's the free games, I guess. Call of Duty Vanguard and Warzone? No, that's in-game content. No. That's not free. Games. Assassin's Creed Origins uh, is free yes. with Ubisoft gonna... Connect. Football Manager. Say, I'll, Middle LJ, Earth. WVU was listing them. Oh, okay. Uh, Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. A lot of other some in-game content you can get for certain things you can play ukulele on amazon luna there you go and it's free with prime and what more could free you want with prime anyway uh oh we should also talk about how now uh there's a family plan for game pass this is interesting yes yes that finally uh, now maybe I can start playing games because Bob will put me on his family plan. Let's see what this. Let's see what the deal is with this. After a leak revealed Xbox Game Pass friends and family branding over the weekend, Microsoft has gone official with its new plan and revealed its pricing in Ireland and Colombia. The new subscription will allow oh. Xbox Game Pass members to share up to four other friends or family members at twenty one ninety nine uh, euros. Per month in Ireland or uh, 49,900 COP in Colombia. <laughs> it does spell cop. Uh, Microsoft isn't restricting this new Game Pass plan to just family members. And the only restriction is that people who are added to the friends and family plan need to be in the same country. Microsoft is currently testing this new uh, friends and family plan in Ireland and Colombia with. Okay, we just said the pricing. It works out to less than five pounds per month. Sorry, uh, five euros per month per person to share the usual Game Pass Ultimate benefits. But this isn't here. We don't get this. We can't do this. No. But if they're testing it in other countries and it goes well, bet your ass they're going to bring it to America to tweet because <laughs> this is their primary market. 
That, okay, this article then goes on to say, if it'll be a similar pricing here in America, it'll be about $25 per month, which is a lot. Yeah. And how many people are on it? Four. That's not a lot. Compared to uh, 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 Nintendo's family plan has eight. And uh, Nintendo's is super cheap anyway. Um, And YouTube Premium has eight as well. Right. And you are on my Nintendo or you're on my YouTube Premium? Yes. (laughs) It it works out to about... If they bring it to here and it'll be about $25, it works out to about $6 per person per month. So in the grand scheme, it's not a bad deal, but it would only be a good deal if you could add four people to it. Uh, and they paid you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or you actually had a family, you know? Yes, that too. Um, so, so fine. Uh, yeah, you need to, you need to have a decent amount of people so so game pass ultimate is 15 dollars yeah okay yeah 15 dollars right. a month yeah all right so 10 dollars more you get mm-hmm. four people basically if you have two people who are actively using it you get a little bit of a deal yeah you're sharing a little bit of a deal i understand if you got kids or something this this is a deal yeah that, that kind of makes sense uh but again it's not here yet it, they're testing it in ireland or in Colombia. congratulations you people <laughs> But again, if it does well over there, they'll bring it on over here. I hope it does well. So, you people should buy it. Ireland and yes. Columbia people listening to this. <laughs> um, we should get into the main topic. Yes. Or Speaking should well, things- hold on? Wait, we should get into the main topic, but we're already thirty minutes into the episode. So should we maybe talk about uh, our balls for a second? Or is that yes. always saving that? Okay. <laughs> no, we should because it'll help us pay for this uh, those price hike that Sony is yes. instituting on us. So thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this video and for helping us pay for the inevitable Sony price hike that is coming. Uh, Thanks, Manscaped. I listen. Hey, I shaved my balls before I left. What I didn't do was cut my nails, and I had a I had, I had huge long nails all of packs until today, basically. Ladies and gentlemen, mostly gentlemen, uh, smooth sack summer is slowly coming to an end. If you haven't been scaping for the summer sun, it's not too late to sweep your sack for those pesky pubes. As summer comes to an end and we enter fall, keep your boys clean and fresh in time for fresh ball fall. The leader in below the waist grooming is here to make sure that your pubes feel smoother than a beach ball and smell fresher than your girl's pumpkin spice. Yeah. How about, how about my pumpkin spice, though? Why is it got to be my I'm, girl's pumpkin spice? I'm just reading the script here. Start the season right. Uh, start the season the right way and join over 6 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. Uh, 20% off for free worldwide shipping with code WOLFDEN at manscaped.com. We all know we all know the deal by now. Manscaped, of course, the finest uh, when it comes to trimming yourself down there the performance package 4.0 is their premiere set over there you of course get the uh, tool shed right it's called the tool shed the shed just the shed just the, the shed for your tools shed. it's a travel bag you can put all your stuff in there including their premiere product that i accidentally just turned on the lawnmower 4.0 uh the uh the Lawnmower 4.0 features cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced shield, advanced skin safe technology, has a 7,000 RPM motor and new multifunction on off switch that can engage as a travel lock. And it gives you the ability to turn on an LED light uh, when you need to have a more precise shave. Like, for example, you do it in the dark for whatever reason. Don't do it in the dark. That's silly. Uh, but this will help you get all the hard to reach places with the, with the LED light. That's not all too. You also get the Manscaped Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Ball Crop Deodorant's Reviver Ball Toner. You really have no idea how much you kind of do need ball deodorant until you try it. Ball deodorant's kind of sick. I told you we used to use powder. Back there, yes. we used to go, hey, you got any ball powder? But now we got a little, like, it's like a lotion. Yes. 
And uh, let us not forget the secret dark horse of the whole kit and caboodle. The Weed Whacker, the ear and nose hair trimmer. Now that's uh, important only, for us. We got hair yes. coming out of a lot of places that yes. it shouldn't come out of. You, you may not know this, but Bob and I, me especially, we're all dudes. We are, we are old men. We are grumpy. And we get hair coming in places where we don't want them. Something like this is key to getting it out of there and making us look presentable to our wives and girlfriends uh friends because otherwise they're gonna look behind that behind our back they're gonna be like she's dating him oh, ew yeah it's a hairy man hairy. i mean they already say yeah. that. yeah <laughs> uh of course the uh, uh the lawnmower is their premier pa- uh product it is uh waterproof it uh helps reduce it is designed to help reduce uh nicks and the risk of ingrown hairs and other grooming accidents that may or may not have happened when i was using scissors back in the day when i first started uh grooming myself down there uh so get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code wolfden at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off and free shipping with the code wolfden at manscaped.com keep things smooth and fresh as we say sayonara to smooth ball summer and enter fresh ball fall i can't wait for fresh ball fall manscaped anyway uh we should also thank uh some people who left us notifications we're really just burying the lead here with the main topic um yeah <laughs> we got brutal beast with 23 months hey bob and will thoughts on Andor star wars show is it out uh i think it's next week it looks very good rogue one it looks uh might be my favorite star wars movie <laughs> <laughs> it well, it's definitely up there uh n- Andor is September 21st. Okay. It it's looks gonna very be good. Th- three episodes are premiering that day. <laughs> I hope there's no lightsabers. We don't need it. Just chill out. Oh, uh, there shouldn't be. It takes place during, you know, the dark time, The f- you know, when there are no Jedi around. Yeah. It seems like it's going to be the rise of the rebellion. Yes. Anyway. Uh, we also have Viper Blade with eight months. Is there a way to buy a Steam Deck outside of America as the website doesn't ship to Australia? That's weird. They should have an Australian site. Yeah. They have a Japanese site. Maybe you should check that one out because you're closer to that. Uh, try, maybe just buy it in America, like through the American site and have it shipped to Australia. Like, That's what you say. It doesn't fucking ship. It doesn't do that. Well, I don't know, man. Sometimes there's sites that will like forward the shipping. I don't know. There are. Yeah. Try one of those. Heat Cobra, thanks for the 34 months. This month marks the two year anniversary of Will's departure from the podcast. Wonder where he is now. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I've hardly missed him. Yeah. Screw that guy. <laughs> Kate McCat with 28 months. A 28 months. One for one for every long year of my sad little life. <laughs> Holy shit. Well, I'm glad we can, uh, you know, spend the last 28 months of your sad little <laughs> life together. <laughs> Spank wise, thanks for the 12 months. Happy anniversary. Uh, and then some emotes that I'm not going to read out loud. Uh, Cyclone, Cylon, Scion, thanks for the three months and for making me uh, have a stroke. Uh, the Laurelin Villager, thanks for the 19 months. 19 months seems like an eternity. Thanks for the entertainment super wolf bros well thank you for being here game journey thanks for the 16 months hey wolf bros enjoy the sub i wondered if you have seen the 8-bit do ultimate controllers being released in october oh you should put that in the put that put oh that, yeah i'll, I'll do that thing. those look, those look nice uh put it under the uh logitech thing um okay sue lord dan thank you for the five months grizzy mill willy bob Okay. Grazie right. mille, Willy Bob. That's Italian, Bob. Mom would be Grizzy Millie Millie. <laughs> Mom would be hitting you with a wooden spoon for getting that wrong, and then hitting me with a wooden spoon because she's still mad at you <laughs> for getting it wrong. Mega Dragon X for the two hundred bits. Are you bros gonna dress up for Halloween episode next month? Fuck. I guess we should. God. I guess. I guess we have to. Wait. Is that is Halloween on a Tuesday? Is it? No, oh, it's on a man. Monday. Okay. So that means the Halloween episode will be on a on November 1st, I guess. 
Yeah. <laughs> or maybe we will skate by Halloween and pretend like it didn't happen. That's yeah, that would be more realistic. That would be preferable. Um. Anyway, all right. Now we can finally talk about uh, the actual news that happened. So the PlayStation Five is going to cost more, depending on where you are. Yes. Uh, hold on. I'm still adding the eight bit do story. Uh, PS Five price increase in select markets due to a global economic environment, including high inflation rates. This is from PlayStation themselves. Yes, uh, in a blog post from CEO, President and CEO Jim Ryan, so you know it's important. Mm -hmm. The global economic environment is a challenge that many of you around the world are no doubt experiencing. We are seeing high global inflation rates as well as adverse currency trends impacting consumers and creating pressure on many industries. Based on these challenging economic conditions, Sony Interactive Entertainment has made the difficult decision to increase the recommended retail price of the PlayStation 5 in select markets across Europe, the Middle East, Africa, Asia Pacific, Latin, Latin America, as well as Canada. There will be no price increase in the U.S. Why, uh, The new That's so weird. It, it is very it's weird. It's so weird that it's everyone. Is it because they know we would be outraged? <laughs> I I feel like it might have something to do with the fact that we might be the biggest market. So I think it might have something to do with us being the most outraged over something like this. Like we would, <laughs> well, we fucking, would be. We 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 would, we would hate be. PlayStation if, if yeah. this happened. Everyone uh, would just but, go buy Xbox. I I think this might also be because you know the U.S. might just be Sony's biggest market for this, so if they don't see the need to increase the price here yet because it's selling well enough as opposed to in other countries. So, Are we really the biggest market? Probably. I would think Japan would be. You would think that, but if you ever look at sales data of like a system in Japan versus uh, in the U.S., it's it's very it's a, there's a very big gap. Mm -hmm. Even like Japanese consoles, like Nintendo consoles and Sony console. Okay. So, uh, in Europe, it's going up about. Uh, 50, 50 euros in the UK. It's going up, I guess. Also, everything's going up by about 50. In, in, in Canada regions. specifically, it's going to be $650 or yes. Canadian loonies. Toonies. Yeah. Uh, for, 600 yeah. for the disk drive version. And then yes. the digital version will be 520 loonies. Uh, and then, okay. Wait. Okay. okay. Give them. Yeah. Uh, while this price increase is a ne uh, necessity given the current global economic environment and its impact on Sony's business, our top priority continues to be improving the PS5 supply situation so that many players as possible can experience everything the PS5 offers and what's still to come. Thank you for your continued support. I have a, I have a dog. I have a dog in my lap. Dog pet and right time there. on the podcast. Yay. <laughs> oh my God. Yay. Hey. Hey, doggo. Dog slapping dog. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Xbox responded to this price hike. Yes. They, uh, they, they said, uh, don't worry, we're not increasing yes. our price. <laughs> um, this is according to Windows Central. Uh, today, Sony dropped something of an unexpected surprise on the video game industry with the announcement that it plans to raise the price of the PlayStation 5, blah, blah, blah. Since that announcement, Xbox fans and commentators from across the gaming sphere have wondered if Microsoft would follow suit with the Xbox Series X and S. Microsoft has won a lot of ground in the console generation by focusing on the value of Game Pass. Wow, this article needs to reach a word count or something. In a statement <laughs> to Windows Central, a Microsoft spokesperson confirmed that there are no plans to raise the price of the Xbox Series X or the Xbox Series S, reiterating that they will remain at their baseline RRPs in various currencies including a usd gbp and uh, eur and then if they say we are constantly evaluating our business to offer our fans great gaming options our xbox series x successful retail price remains 300 dollars and xbox series x just retail price is 500 dollars
Uh, okay. Anyway, so basically, Sony had to raise the price. Uh, people were worried that other companies were going to follow suit, and Microsoft said, "No, we're not going to do it." Yes. And Nintendo, I don't think said anything, or they might have. I think they might have said something. I think they might have, because I remember seeing somewhere that Nintendo confirmed that they're not going to raise the price. Yeah, and I got time. mad because they already fucking did. <laughs> the OLED Switch is fifty dollars more, and it's basically but, the same shit. Right, but they can pass that off as a different model because it's got a different screen, a different hard drive, different kickstand, different speakers. Right, and, and you, know. you know what? To their credit, they still sell the original Nintendo Switch. Exactly. And I'm just double checking to make sure that I'm not wrong. Yes, it seems like it's still in stock, the original Nintendo Switch. Uh, so, yeah. So so you can still get the baseline Nintendo Switch for the same price. But, again, yeah. they made a new one that's $50 more that probably definitely yeah. shouldn't have been $50 more if the economy was fine and if there wasn't global chip shortages everywhere. That that one right. probably would have been a normal price uh, uh, Nintendo Switch. Uh, it's interesting that they would increase the price because I had said when they, when, uh, Facebook said they were going to increase the price of the meta quest, you know, people were asking if this would happen to the consoles. And I said on this show that I don't think that would happen because usually they make up all profits with software sales. Right. Uh, thank you, Sony, for proving me wrong that <laughs> you, know, you are increasing the price. Uh, everywhere that is weird uh, yeah i would think yeah. that they would like include a weird little tax on on software sales or something or, or or i would think that uh the playstation plus premium would be enough to to cover the cost of the uh, developing the hardware it's very or, weird for a company to, to 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 do something about the loss that they're taking with the hardware like this yeah, or, you know, make the place. I thought they were going to make the PlayStation VR, you know, the new version, like it jack up the price of that. That's going to be expensive. For, yeah, That's it's going to be insanely expensive. No matter expensive. what. Yeah. But, you know, that could have been a, a case where Sony could have made up some profits by having the, you know, not by a lot, but like having the price of it artificially inflated to make up for some of the profits lost on PS5 consoles sold. Like, uh, the, the the PlayStation VR originally, what was it? It was 400 and then five if you yeah. wanted the move controllers or, or was it 300 and then five if you wanted the move controllers? I think 300 and then five if you wanted move. Which is very cheap for VR, but this new one has like all this shit that they want to add to it that you know is yeah. going to be expensive. And and uh, the way hardware is right now and the how expensive the PlayStation 5 is in general, I think it's going to be baseline at least $600. It's going to be a lot. Yeah. Um, and this also, I think, uh, gives evidence that the PlayStation five was just not, they, they didn't have things figured out when they launched this thing. Like they yeah. kind of, it feels like they kind of rushed it out. Um, there was a lot of software stuff that they figured out later on that they're still kind of figuring out. We just got 1440 P resolutions on the PlayStation five, like a month ago. Um, yeah. so I would think any minute now would be time for an for an iterative version of the PlayStation Five, but instead they're like, "Forget it, we're we can't meet the demand. We're jacking this thing up a little bit." Yeah, uh, and people are going to pay it. It, it, it. I I think that the the market determines stuff like this, and the market's determining that they can raise the price that they're allowed to. And I think that Nintendo might have been a use case. Nintendo selling a yeah. more expensive console and it working out for them. Uh, probably uh, led Sony to being like, well, we could just, what's stopping us from just charging some more money? Well, I mean, they the Switch OLED is technically a different version of the Switch. Right. A, a better case scenario would have been if like Sony had put out like the PS5 Pro and sold that at a premium and discontinued the base model PS5. And the pro in this sense would have just been, you know, a PS5 that was like redesigned with maybe like a more efficient processor or a bit easier to access uh, SSD slot. I, the difference is that the Switch came out 
in 2017, early 2017. So it's been out right. for a long time. So releasing an iterative version that is barely any different for $50 more, I think, uh, is in, is a little insane in a normal market, but it's not a normal market. Yeah. Everything's kind of uh, inflated right now. Um, normally, what console companies have done is they've released an iterative version of the console for the same price as the last version of that console. Like yes. like the 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 Xbox Elite or or not the Elite the the what are they what did you call it? the 360 with the the, the Model of, S yeah, yeah like that. S. Um, stuff like that, or the top loader Super Nintendo, uh, uh, yeah, the top loader Super Nintendo, the different versions of the Wii. There were like three different versions yeah. of the Wii. Um, they just they're just replacements, but but in Nintendo's case, it was a straight up uh, fifty dollar upgrade. Yeah. Um, that I think would not have cost that much if we weren't in in such a shitty situation. But at least that yeah. has shit going on in there there's at least like new shit in that this is right. legit just the console that you could have gotten for five hundred dollars too bad now you gotta pay 550 or whatever it is yeah. in, in in that country um, but like you said you know the, the ps5 is still in high demand you know people are pay, paying ebay prices for it they'll pay fifty dollars more at retail for it yeah, and it sucks for the people who have been waiting and like trying to save up for it, uh, or maybe they had an opportunity to get one and they didn't, uh, but they still want one. They maybe they oh maybe I should save a little more. Now they just got it, fucked. Yeah, it sucks because fifty dollars, you know, give or take, is the price of a game. Mm -hmm. So instead of you know you you save up for the system plus a game, now you're just saving up for the system. If that <laughs> they should they should give like a like a like six months of PlayStation plus premium or something with it. They should add some sort of value to it digitally. Yeah. Give somebody a throwaway, you know, maybe give you a discount yeah, on a game or something like that. Like, like a free copy of, I don't know, like God of war one or something. Yeah. So just literally anything to, to, to make yeah. it worth the, the, the price hike. Now, Xbox, on the other hand, I'll remind everybody that if you want a next gen console and you're fine with 1440 P, which is a fantastic resolution. The Xbox Series S is just three hundred dollars. It's the price of the yeah. old Nintendo Switch. <laughs> yes, and, and can play games is, at a much better graphical fidelity. It is often readily available at retail. I yes. always see it at Target. Yeah, so it's, it's a fucking awesome console for just yeah. three hundred dollars. I feel like most people aren't. I mean, I guess I, I'm a little stupid. I feel like most people have 1440p monitor or or 1080p or 1440p monitors. Not a lot of people have 4K mm -hmm. monitors, but most people have 4K TVs. So yeah, and most people play consoles on 4K. Most people play consoles on TVs. I'm too used yeah. to everything's a monitor to me. I don't even fucking touch the TV ever. Uh, but if you want to play on a monitor, there's nothing wrong with an Xbox Series S, and it's nice and tiny. Yeah. It can go right behind your monitor. Probably it's a freaking awesome console. Um, and then you get Game Pass. Although we just yeah. learned. PlayStation Plus Premium got a little bit. It got some better games on there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, Game Pass still has a lot of games on it. You know, not Game Pass to, has a lot know, of games on it. But when when PlayStation Plus Premium launched, they had, they had some better games on PlayStation well, Plus Premium. You got to remember, like, Game Pass has all of like their first party stuff, and even day and date uh, that's, with retail release. That's the thing. that's the that's the big thing. Um. Also, too, like they haven't been adding a lot of new stuff, like exciting stuff. That's they haven't been adding any new exciting stuff, but they do have a lot of older exciting stuff in their catalog. Right. Uh, yeah. The, the, where Game Pass wins is the day and date uh, first party stuff. Yeah. And also, there's some cool tech stuff going on with the retro stuff or, or the back catalog yeah. of Xbox stuff. They got some nice polish going on where PlayStation kind of falls flat there. There's a lot of weird like graphical issues and stuff. Yeah. And the whole, the fact that all of the PlayStation three games are um, streaming is a little mm -hmm. sad, but uh, otherwise PlayStation plus premium has a great catalog. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, anything else we need to add to uh, PlayStation uh, jacking up the price? Uh, the only thing I can think of adding is, 
you know, they're doing it. They're doing it in most territories except the United States. Do you think? Because we were talking before with you know the Game Pass family plan, they're testing it in Ireland and Colombia, and if it's successful, they're bringing it here. Do you think Sony is testing the uh, price tag of the PS5 in other countries before they bring it here? <laughs> I think they're afraid to bring it here. I think that they're going to try right. everything in their power to not jack up the price. Uh, but it might come to them needing to jack it up here as well. So yeah. uh, I think they will try not to do that. They'll try to instead just manage with what they can do. But it's possible, yes, that they will jack up the price here as well. Yeah. It's a very strange way that they're running things over there. Uh, anyway, uh, we got some more notifications like Pole Line with 43 months. Wolf Den Dad is now the best part of your videos. More him, less Bob. <laughs> should I let him make a whole video? What would he even talk you about? Sh you should let him make a whole video. What would he even Just talk? like a, a boomer's guide to the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, he maybe I should get him to play that one that I got mom. So, so many years ago. <laughs> I should put some games on there that he could play. Yeah. Uh, Frito Pie Snacks. Thanks for the 11 months. Hope you are both well. I'm good. I can't fine. speak for Will, though. Yeah, I threw up on my mouth a little bit, but I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Eric. Thanks for the 54 months. I saw Eric this weekend. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we had we had dinner. It was great. And, nice. uh, and then uh, Trevor paid for it, and I got very bad. <laughs> And that caused a huge Bob. scene. <laughs> anyway, uh, we are also getting a uh, what would you call this? A uh, special edition thing you could make your PlayStation Five. Like it's the first time that we're getting a pattern that the PlayStation Five could be a special pattern. It's but it's not like a yeah. special edition PlayStation Five. It's just you could put fucking side panels on it that are camouflage. I don't know how else to put yeah. it. So, you know, before we saw the different colored side panels, but they were always one solid color, like black or blue or red or whatever. Yeah. Now, uh, Sony is releasing a, uh, I almost said gay camo. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely not. <laughs> no, gray camo <laughs> PS5. The most basic uh, ass, is boring ass camo. Yeah. Uh, Sony Interactive Entertainment will release a new gray camouflage versions of the DualSense wireless controller, the PlayStation 5 console covers, and the Pulse 3D wireless headset this fall, uh, while ostensibly timed to hit alongside the October release of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. This new camouflage pattern design uh, will primarily serve as a vector for make making jokes about how you can't find your DualSense controller because it's camouflaged, you see. <laughs> Um, so yeah, basically this is a, a Call of Duty bundle without it being a Call of Duty bundle. Yes. Uh, it looks like there is a little bit of green in it, but it's mostly gray. Wish it was more yeah. gay, Will. <laughs> yes. Uh, the uh, DualSense will retail for $75, which is $5 more than the standard white or black DualSense controller. Uh, hate yeah. it when they do that. Uh, the Console covers will go for $55 and the pulse headsets will be a hundred. Oh, sorry. I've, I messed it up. Sony did not announce pricing for these, but, uh, colored dual sense controllers typically go for 75, which is a $5 premium from the white controllers. Uh, console covers go for 55 normally and pulse 3d wireless headsets go for a hundred dollars normally. Interesting. Uh, yeah. yeah. So fifty five for the covers is cool. They might charge more. Yeah, I, I, it's possible. And it sucks because like the pink and like the blue and shit is cooler than this. <laughs> yeah. So like I don't. This is, I. I mean I don't see them being able to sell that many of these. I don't know. I but I guess like I mean you... who, there's there's idiots who like you know camo stuff. Yeah, if you're into hunting, like I mean, really yeah. into hunting, you might get a kick out of this. Yeah, some some people in the south that are 
Yeah. Gonna have, not going to be able to find their PlayStation 5 anymore. <laughs> Uh, there's also new, so like the Sony Pulse 3 headset, like, yeah, it's cool, whatever. But there's also the new ones that they're coming out with that, that are way more money. The iZone yes. ones. Uh, yes. Well, those uh, are like, they're like PC gaming brand. Right. That's that's a good yeah. point. I was about to say, who would buy this now that the new ones are coming out? <laughs> like these headphones are cool because they just work with the PlayStation 5. But otherwise, I don't think they're that great. I don't think they're anything to really write home about. Yeah. Uh. Anyway. Uh. That's it for the PlayStation stuff. Yes. We should talk about this Logitech handheld that we talked about. We talked about how Logitech was partnering with Tencent a while ago, like a month yes. ago, maybe. Uh, yes. And they're gonna make a gaming handheld for streaming. Yes. Well. Uh, it the- leaked. The pictures of it have leaked. I'm going to show it, but this might get clipped out of the YouTube upload. If it does, I mean, you're going to have to maybe listen to it on the podcast, but yeah. like the podcast version or something. But um, uh, it, it pictures of it leaked. Uh, they are taking it down on a lot of websites. The original upload was on 9to5google.com. Yes. And it's still there. So you can probably Google around and find it there. I'm going to show it on the screen now. This might get blurred out or taken out of the, po- of the podcast entirely, but here it is. Um, uh, yes, Evan Blast shared a trio of images of the Logitech G gaming handheld, which uh, was the name shared at the beginning of the August in the initial teaser page. Uh, that brand is particularly known for PC gaming peripherals. Uh, this cloud gaming handheld is coming later this year, according to the initial preview. With a Nintendo Switch-esque form factor, the device is predominantly white in color. Uh, There are black thumbsticks flanking the screen, which has a sizable bezel uh, with a D-pad at the left and the X, Y, A, B buttons on the right. There are also four buttons placed roughly at each corner of the display, uh, including home. Uh, The black edges, uh, the, the top black edge has trigger buttons, volume rocker, and possibly a mute switch as well as what looks like a memory card slot. The UI is also Switch-like and predominantly shows the Google Play Store, followed by the Xbox uh, Cloud Gaming, NVIDIA GeForce Now, and Steam Remote Play. Other UI elements include a row of five navigation uh, sections in the top left corner, while the Time, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi and Battery are in the other end. Um, We also see the cards for Chrome and uh, YouTube, uh, which pretty much guarantees that the Logitech G ha- uh, gaming handle will be powered by Android. Uh, in an update, according to Google Play Console, the Logitech G gaming handheld uh, also goes by GR0006, uh, running Android 11, powered by Snapdragon 720G with 4 gigs of RAM and a 1080 by 1920 display. Uh, the Octa-Core Qualcomm chip is from 2020 and is targeted at mobile gaming, but is otherwise meant for smartphone. Okay. So, I mean, it seems pretty beefy. It's got, yeah, it's got almost four gigabytes of Ram, which is pretty, pretty substantial. I don't know about this, uh, Snapdragon 720 G. Is that any good? This might be a decent, is it? Oh, it's going to be Android 11. This might be a decent, like, yeah. like emulation machine. It might be. Yeah. I mean, it's it's clear that, you know, using a cell phone processor makes it clear that this is 100% for streaming. It's not meant to, like, be like a Steam Deck where you can download yeah, your game on there. Yeah, but, well, yeah, so it's it's Android specifically. So so you're not yeah. going to be playing freaking Jedi Fallen Order on this thing like you can on a Steam Deck. But uh-huh. you can probably do a very good job getting this thing to be an emulation machine. Especially yes. with its, I mean, the size looks pretty big, though. This mm. doesn't look as sleek as it could, because especially because it's just a phone. Like the yeah. cut, like it's got giant uh, grips on the back. It looks thicker and 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 it looks thicker than a switch. Yeah, I'm not I'm not loving it, and also because it's a uh, very similar to the new Aya Neos that are coming out. And these are whole ass like Windows computers. Yeah. Uh, so this is like an old, I don't know what this version of the Aya Neo is, but then there's 
this one that looks a lot more similar. This is the one that I've seen the most, the one with this weird like oval thing around the thumbstick and, and the D-pad. Uh, that mm -hmm. looks very similar to what uh, uh, Logitech is working with right now. Um, but I guess they're all just trying to mimic a, a Nintendo Switch anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not... I'm interested to see how the streaming is going to work and stuff because I think Logitech is going to enter this space and they're going to try to do everything as legally, you know, like, <laughs> like, like it's going to have to be as like legally acceptable as possible. Yes. So it will be a streaming device like. Yes. Like, like, uh, and that's basically it. So, so I'm excited to make this thing a streaming, uh, 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 to make this thing an emulation machine. I'm excited to make it an emulation machine. Uh, but first thing I'm going to do is just play it the way they want me to play it and see how that goes. Because yeah. I think streaming can work. And I think Logitech are the type of people who will make it uh, a, a, a more user-friendly experience than it has been on any of these other weird Chinese devices that I've used. Yeah. Uh, I think Logitech is a big enough brand name that they could, you know, they have the R&D, especially if they're using Tencent money to make it the game the streaming gaming device that not only they want it to be but that consumers want it to be and i think that with the name brand recognition of logitech you can get it out into big box retailers like best buy uh like target right. you know places that sell logitech already to you know get it out there to more people this might be the 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 portable streaming handheld the portable gaming handheld that gets uh mom and dad curious <laughs> that's interesting i didn't think about that how logitech is already in like stores yeah uh do you think we will see this in stores before we see a steam deck in stores <laughs> yes that's yeah. very weird because has valve ever sold hardware in a store no like do you remember being able to go and buy a steam controller in a store no yeah because Valve knows that their audience will just go to their website and buy everything. I think the Steam Deck is a bigger name for sure and should be in stores more than this Logitech stupid thing. But I think that Logitech yeah. has more pull with the brick and mortar. Yeah. It's very interesting. Um, anyway, we got more notifications from King Wizard who's with the three months who says, building a mix box suggestions for making a hole in a tin lunch box. God. Um, all right. You need a block of wood and you need a drill. Yeah. <laughs> because you need to put the tin over the block of wood and drill into the tin so that you don't morph the so you don't warp the tin. Like the block of wood needs to hold to the all the weight of you fucking drilling down into it. Um and then Eric says nine millimeter at the range. <laughs> Also a good point. <laughs> That'll do it. Um, Mecha Dragon with the 13 months. It was great seeing you bros again at Long Island Retro last month, bros. Hope to see you all again soon. Did you say you were a Mecha Dragon? Yeah. Did we meet you and you, you just say didn't say you, you were Mecha Dragon? <laughs> <laughs> or are you trying to be incognito? Because I don't remember you. Yeah. I would have. If you said you were Mecha Dragon, I would have known. I would have. I would have screamed. Yes. But uh, anyway. VHS Death, thank you for the four months. What up, Wolf Bros? Hello from Puerto Rico. Well, hello. Hello. Um. Anyway, let's talk about 8BitDo's new controller. Yes. There are three of them, in fact. Oh, my God. 8BitDo uh, is taking a stab at the Pro Controller market with the release of the 8BitDo Ultimate, uh, which is currently available for pre-order on Amazon and begins shipping October 28th. Apidu's older controllers like the SN30 Pro and Pro 2 have boasted a broad array of compatibility options thanks to their Bluetooth connectivity, but the Ultimate controller will be available in three different configurations. Bluetooth for $70, 2.4 gigahertz for $50, or wired for $35, based on your preferred console and connectivity method. The Bluetooth model... <laughs> I almost choked on spit right there. The Bluetooth <laughs> model will also problems. come packaged with a 2.4 gigahertz wireless adapter. And along with the wired model, 
uh, will be compatible with the Nintendo Switch, Windows, Android, and iOS devices. The 2.4 gigahertz exclusive model won't be compatible with the Switch, but retains all the other previous connect, uh, connectivity options. Uh, pause. How is it not compatible with the Switch if 2.4 gigahertz is through a dongle? I'm very, con- I'm so confused. So the first thing that confuses me is the Bluetooth model also comes packaged with a 2.4 gigahertz wireless adapter. Yes. Adapter. The article yes. says adapter, not dongle. Yes. So what is it's it same, adapting? It's, it's the same thing. It's you know that you know how Ipidu makes that like uh that dongle that's like with the brick design yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's that. The Bluetooth model will have a switch on the back where you can switch back and forth between Bluetooth and 2.4 gig. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. So it'll have both wireless bands. Yeah. And you okay. just switch back and forth between the two with the switch. Okay. My what I'm trying to say is the 2.4 gigahertz model will have the adapter is the dongle. So you right. plug it in and it transmits to the dongle. That should theoretically work on a switch. Yeah. I don't know why it this is saying it isn't. And I don't know why they think it's gonna work with an iOS device. Because <laughs> you can't plug in a USB device into an iOS device. That is a good point. Uh yeah, wait, yeah, it says the it says the Bluetooth model uh and uh, along with the wired model is compatible with the Switch, Windows, Android, and iOS. So the wired model is compatible with iOS. Yeah. Um I I mean I guess you could plug it into the friggin' USB C port of an iPad if you really love dongles. Um, I guess the 2.4 gigahertz exclusive model won't be compatible with the switch, but retains all of the other previous connectivity options. So, so I have the arcade stick, love the arcade stick that has a Bluetooth right. option. It has a Bluetooth antenna in it. I never, mm-hmm. ever use that. There's a dongle port in the back. You pull the dongle out and it's 2.4 gigahertz. You plug it right in. There's a switch on it. It goes from Bluetooth to 2.4 gigahertz. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. I always use the 2.4 gigahertz dongle because first of all, it's just easier to sync to because it's a dedicated dongle. And second of all, 2.4 gigahertz is faster than Bluetooth. Yeah. Um. So it's cool that there's both Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz, but the 2.4 gigahertz dongle should be compatible with the Nintendo Switch, especially if the arcade stick was. Yeah. Maybe it's because uh, pre- it's cheaper and they just wanted to save money by not having it work with the Switch. Ah, uh, maybe, but like, I don't know, because it, theoretically it's still the same thing. They just took out a wire, a wireless band antenna. And it also says that the 2.4 gigahertz, yeah, it only works with, it says Windows, Android, and Raspberry Pi. So no iOS support, which is also really huh. weird. Yeah. Anyway, previous 8-bit do controllers have iterated on the classic Sega and Nintendo designs, but the Ultimate will uh, be more closely resemble contemporary models associated with PlayStation or Xbox, complete with asymmetrical analog sticks and a pair of back paddles for additional inputs. Uh, however, the Ultimate Controller will offer a suite of premium features you typically find on a controller that costs twice as much. Besides being offered in black, white, and pink colorways, the wireless models uh, come packaged with their own charging dock. Perhaps yeah. the coolest new feature uh, coming to the, to the Ultimate Controller is Apidude's new controller software suite, uh, which will allow you to remap, tune, uh, remap and tune your controls on PC, Android, and iOS devices. You'll be able to save your preferences for up to three separate profiles stored independently on the controller's hardware. I want I want this specifically because of the dock and because yes. you can put the dongle in the dock. Every yes. fucking thing that comes with the dongle needs a place to put the dongle. If you don't have a place yeah. to put the dongle, don't come with the dongle. I'm talking to you, Sony, with the stupid headphones. There's <laughs> plenty of room in that headphone for a friggin' dongle thing to, to put the dongle. Yeah. Also, I want to jump in and say that the Amazon listing says that the uh, the ultimate, you know, the, the fucking expensive one is compatible with Switch via Bluetooth and Windows yes. with a 2.4 gigahertz adapter. So it's confirmed. 
that you can't use the 2.4 gigahertz adapter for for switch for some stupid reason interesting but you could use you can connect it to windows through bluetooth i assume uh that it didn't say it there it said it said windows via the 2.4 gigahertz dongle why you gotta make it so difficult (laughs) I don't understand because the fucking uh uh the Apid Do Pro 2, which is my favorite switch controller basically. Yeah. Um it works with everything. There's a switches on the oh, back, it freaking works with wait everything. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, we're waiting. Check out the button layout of the ABX and Y button between the 2.4 gigahertz and the Bluetooth model. So, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to make sure I'm looking at the right ones here. Okay, we got Bluetooth right here. A, B, X, Y is looking like Nintendo. Right. And now 2.4 go to gigahertz the other is looking like Xbox. I, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Like the, cult, like the button layout is different. Like it's the same letters, but the button layout is two different company styles. Okay, so so I was with you for a minute because yeah. I was thinking maybe it is compatible with everything. They just didn't say that because the button layout is specific. But the wired version works with everything and that is the Xbox style button layout. Hmm. Okay, so there goes that. <laughs> just questionable decisions all around here. Yeah. I, I'd like to speak to somebody and, and ask why it is. You know, I might send over a little email. Yeah, you're friends with them. I'd like to I'd like to know more about why they decided to, to do it this way. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, you know, when I saw this, I was like, this kind of defeats the purpose of why I like a Badoo controller so much, because this is just a pro controller. Like, like the layout yeah. is just a pro controller layout. But the fact that it comes with the dock and 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 the little dongle thing, I'm a little more interested. Yeah, I think uh, this is still a good alternative because the whole point of like third party controllers was to uh, have an extra controller at a more reasonable price than the first party stuff. And Ape Do pretty much still offers that. However, seventy dollars for a for a Bluetooth controller, you're you're entering into the realm of first party pricing yeah and but you're still getting a premium controller that normally would cost a lot more for the price of a first party controller yeah the things that you're getting are like the the remappable buttons and stuff yeah the uh, uh the back button the back button uh profiles the dock yeah all that stuff is great uh, but yeah. being the same price as as an official controller, it has to has to feel great. You know, it has to yeah. it, it has to really feel like a premium piece of tech. Otherwise, you're just going to yeah. go for the first party one because the first have, party one guaranteed justify, to work. You have to justify the price. And I think right. they're, you know, the dock alone justifies the price. Yeah, that's true. And again, I like the option of having 2.4 gigahertz or Bluetooth because if you're making a professional controller, a, a pro controller, a professional controller, having 2.4 gigahertz on a dongle is fantastic, but it says it doesn't work with Switch. So I'm very uh, concerned. I need I need to get one of these in my hands and see what it's actually like. Uh, J- Jubal Void says, oh, looks like the iOS compatibility for the wired is just for their config app. Not using the controller. iOS that has weird that doesn't make any compatibility. I, it does because, as far as I know, you can't use an eight bit do controller on iOS. Yes, you. Can. You can use it on Mac OS, but not oh. iOS. Because it's an Apple. Switch. iOS, iOS only really supports PlayStation controllers, X and Xbox controllers, and Joy Cons. Like that's it. Yeah on on the Amazon listing, it doesn't even say ios yeah you can buy dual sense controllers from apple directly because they stay officially supported on uh, ios yeah they, they now support joy cons yeah um so yeah i need to get one of these in my hands to actually ex- experience what 
it, it sounds confusing. I'm a little confused about how, how it how it works, which is not the way yeah. you want to go about things. Um. Anyway, we got more notifications as well. We have okay. VHS death with four months. What up, Wolf Bros? Hello from Peru, Puerto Rico, my dudes. Did I read that? You read that already. Well, we got a new one from Lost Tech <laughs> Four with seven months. Do you think Game Gear, Saturn, and Dreamcast will come to Nintendo Switch Online? That'd be fucking insane. What's the nuts. most likely new system that will get added to Nintendo Switch Online? Well, funny you say that. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm just going to jump the gun here. Did I make an article? Okay. You did. Game Revolution. Oh, here we go. I'm going to I'm gonna move it. I'm going to put it up. Funny you say that because uh, the rumor mill is a spinning and chances are it's going to be GameCube. I don't know if it's coming to Nintendo Switch Online. I think they're going to do some wacky, weird shit. Yeah. But it looks like we might be getting some GameCube games. Uh, discussion surrounding Nintendo Switch GameCube remasters first surfaced following a tweet by Liam Robinson, a YouTuber with a track record for insider information. Robinson tweeted the following. We're going to do a lot of winning this month, GameCube Nation, with uh, which prompted Direct Feed Games, an account belonging to insider Nate Drake, to imply that an F-Zero GX remaster could be on the way. Uh, Robinson then responded, uh, as much as I know what you're getting at, I don't think we're on the same page here. There's a lot of GameCube love coming. Over on the Family Board forum via Reddit, insider Emily Rogers was notably less vague, outright claiming that Nintendo is currently developing a whole bunch of GameCube remasters. Uh, no, it's true. Nintendo is doing going crazy with remasters and remakes, Roger said. Most of the remasters mentioned in this thread are either in development or under serious consideration at Nintendo. The games mentioned in the thread include F-Zero GX, Metroid Prime, Twilight Princess, and Wind Waker, and Pikmin 1 and 2. Uh, Legend of Zelda GameCube remaster games are also allegedly set to appear during a Nintendo Direct this month. That's true. Uh, that's another rumor. We're getting a Nintendo Direct sometime this month. I think we always get mm -hmm. one in September anyway, so it kind of makes sense. Okay. Um, but yeah, so there's a couple things that could be going on here. I think we're either going to get some Nintendo Switch Online stuff. They need to make the premium subscription worth a little more. Uh, like like yeah. Nintendo, like N64 is. I think pretty good when it had a little a bit of a hard launch and it got a lot of criticism, but I think the games that were there were worth the extra money. I know that not everybody wants something like that and that's fine. Adding GameCube games would add a fuck ton more value. Oh yeah. But uh, it's also possible that they are making individual releases. Like we knew Metroid prime that that yes. remaster or re-release or whatever has been in development for a really long time they've had that shelved for a long time because they've been waiting yeah. for uh metroid prime 4 to to launch or something before they uh or, or at least have some more information before they launched uh the the remake or, or remaster of metroid yeah. prime um and they're saying now that these games are in development uh, yeah, F Zero GX, Metroid Prime, The Legend of Zelda, Twilight Princess, Wind Waker. So like, it's possible the in development means that they're just make tweaking them within the emulator, like they did with the N sixty four games, or they're straight up just going to release them piecemeal, which would kind of suck. I mean, it, they're probably looking at it from from a financial perspective. It probably makes more financial sense instead of trying to emulate GameCube games on a whole put them on switch online to just remaster or remake them piece by piece mm -hmm. and optimize them for the switch and sell them individually to maximize profit yeah i mean uh gamecube emulation is very hard it's not as hard as the n64 stuff but uh mm -hmm. it's it takes a lot of power and and uh a lot can go wrong so uh yeah i also think that uh gamecube games I don't know. Something about games that came out after N64 feel like they're worth more. <laughs> yeah. Like, like for some reason, uh, roping a bunch of N64 games together is like fine. Roping a bunch of Super Nintendo games together feels fine. And like 
have it, ha- yeah. giving them to you at a lot. That feels fine. N64, it was like a little different. It was like, okay, these feel like, you know, big fleshed out games. Like maybe I wouldn't mind paying for them piecemeal. But uh, GameCube games, for whatever reason, it feels like a much bigger deal to buy them individually. But uh, yeah, I would be, I would much prefer just having it in the subscription because I already have the subscription. And then I can yeah. try them all out. I don't have to buy all of them and just play a little bit of them to try them out, you know? I know a lot of people would rather have them individually because maybe you want F-Zero GX, but you don't want Twilight Princess or, or the other way around. Right. Um, but I want to try them all. I want to pop in and pop out of all of them just to see how they all play. Yeah. So, so I would much rather have them as part of the service. Um. So that I mean that's the rumor. So this this month, uh, if there's a Nintendo Direct, maybe we'll hear about uh, some GameCube games. I also no. thought we'd be uh, if we're talking about Nintendo Switch Online. I thought we'd be it'd be much easier for them to put some Game Boy stuff on there. Yeah, but uh, it's yeah. also possible Very- this isn't Nintendo Switch Online stuff. So who knows? Yeah, very surprised that they haven't added any of that stuff mm-hmm. to there. Uh, there's still time. Uh, let's talk about DRM, everybody's favorite. Yay! Digital rights management software known as Denuvo is going to be coming to the Nintendo Switch at some point in the near future. The program has become notorious among PC players, creating all sorts of controversy for causing poor performance and even hardware damage. The company behind Denuvo, uh, Erdetto, never heard of the company behind Denuvo, has vehemently denied both claims. Ardito, uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. Ardito is described as the world leader in digital platform cybersecurity, empowering businesses to innovate uh, for a secure, connected future. The services provided by the company protect revenue, enable growth, and fight cybercrime in video entertainment, video games, and connected industries. The news comes from a recent press release in which the company announced that Denuvo is going to be available for Nintendo Switch. According to the release, Nintendo consoles have long suffered from piracy issues and the Switch is no different. Even if a game is protected against piracy on its PC version, the release version on Switch can be emulated from day one and played on PC, therefore bypassing strong protections offered on the PC version. This can happen with any of the numerous games available on Switch. Uh, They seem to be interested in protecting cross-platform games from piracy, but the addition of Denuvo could make uh, any form of emulation especially difficult, uh, even for a game as pres- even for a game preservationists. By preventing piracy on the Switch while blocking unauthorized emulation on PC, studios are able to increase their revenue during a game launch window, which is the most important period uh, in regards to monetization. The company claims they also note how the Switch emulator protection will ensure that anyone wishing to play the game has to buy a legitimate copy. The move is very much in line with the policies recently enacted by Nintendo. The developer and publisher has long been struggling against any form of software emulation, much to the dismay of pirates and game preservationists alike. This comes in the wake of news that developers have been pulling Denuvo from their games in response to negative comments from players. BioWare, for example, removed the program for Mass Effect Legacy Legendary Edition of this time last year. Platinum, Square Enix, Bandai Namco also followed suit shortly afterwards pulling Denuvo from Near Automata, Marvel's Avengers, uh, and Flight Simulator, Ace Combat 7, respectively. There is currently no word on when Denuvo is going to be implemented for the Switch and which upcoming games will be affected. Now, do you see those memes that are like uh, just various game characters saying, it's surprisingly easy to mod a 3DS? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh It's shockingly easy to play emulated Nintendo Switch games, like on a computer. Not so much on like a random device, but like on a computer, it's very easy to just emulate a game. So this is some sort of like uh, software that can be used by game developers to make it so that their game can't be pirated. Uh, Mm Mm-hmm. Now, Denuvo has it. Everybody hates Denuvo, not because it's it, not because they're trying to pirate the games, but because for whatever reason, it takes up an ins- like an insane amount of CPU usage, and 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 like it, it it's just a system hog that isn't necessary. It's, even if you're paying yeah. for the game, 
it's a burden on your machine that you're running the game off of. Um, there were many stories when the Resident Evil 2 remake was released that uh, people who pirated the game and ran it without Denuvo installed actually had better performance than people who bought a legitimate copy of the game with the Denuvo software included. It yeah. is that much of a problem that not having it gave you a better experience. Yeah, so uh, that's why everybody's upset right now because uh, yeah, I mean this is, this has nothing to do with Nintendo. K Jack in the chat also says uh, Denuvo put out a statement that said Nintendo has nothing to do with it. Uh, yeah. uh, this is just they just want to sell this to to you know like developers who are developing for for a Nintendo Switch so that they can license yeah. it to them. Uh, so this has nothing to really do with Nintendo. Uh, this is just something Denuvo developed that is trying to sell for de- developers developing for the Nintendo Switch. Um, mm-hmm. People are just upset because they don't want this shitty uh, anti-piracy software to enter into their games to then muck yeah. up their Nintendo Switch stuff. Um, yeah. And I don't blame them. It's it's a little bit ridiculous that they think they can now come into the console space uh, and bring their crappy software, yeah, to you know, to our realm, basically. Yeah. Uh, nobody, yeah, yes, people pirate Switch games, but nobody pirates Switch games nearly the same at the same level as PC gaming uh, does. Most people, if they want to play a Switch game, they're gonna buy a Switch game. There's only two yeah. places you can get Switch games from: Nintendo directly or a physical cartridge. So. I don't really see I don't really see the need for something like this outside of a very small niche market that is clearly not hurting the profits of Nintendo or any of its, you know, third party partners. The biggest defense against piracy is just making your game or media or whatever as accessible as possible to people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that includes making it cheap. But most of the time, it just includes putting it on stores and making it easy to access and download and pay for. Yes. That's why, like, uh, you know, like movie and music piracy went downhill because all these streaming services went up and it became so much easier to just do it legitimately. So Mm -hmm. just do that. Just you don't need the nouveau DRM for especially for a switch game. Yeah. Just fucking just fucking make it accessible to people but that's nintendo's job nintendo kind of a little bit of a pain in the ass to work with when it comes to uh putting games on their storefront uh so i don't know if i don't know if denuvo is going to help indie developers uh prevent piracy on their games i think it's nintendo's job to just make it easier to like update their games on the eShop and 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 make it accessible and stuff like that mm-hmm Anyway, um, that's it. That's all. That's for Denuvo. Uh, yeah. I put this article here. I'll breeze through it real quick. This is uh, Mario. I just thought this was interesting. Mario Kart Tour, you know, the uh, the phone version of Mario Kart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You haven't heard much about Mario Kart Tour, right? Other than they put some maps in, in Mario Kart proper for some reason. Yeah, that's like the big. Yeah. And I was like, that's stupid. Why would they do that? Uh, apparently, very popular game. So popular, okay. it generated almost $300 million in revenue. Wow. And because it generated so much money, they're taking out the loot boxes for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> it was so successful, they said, forget it. We're not, we don't want any more money. Uh, Sensor Tower, who is uh, like, what are they? They friggin' uh, tell you how much games sell and stuff. They're like industry mm-hmm. people. Sensor Tower has shared some new stats on Mario Kart Tour. According to them, the game has reportedly reached almost $300 million in revenue. In proportion to last year's sale update in April, it had already excelled with 200 million downloads, where players have been spending 200 million since its first release in 2019. Okay, so over a couple years. That over like yeah. what? What is that? Three years? That makes a little more sense. Yeah. According to Central Tower stats, the ex the exact estimated amount is two hundred and ninety three million. That's a lot for Nintendo. 
Mario Kart Tour is a free to play game where players from all around the world use real life money to buy resources that including that including rubies. These rubies will help players get pipes to unlock new drivers, gliders and carts. Okay. The game also made its earnings from the Gold Pass subscription which cost $5. However, Nintendo is planning to launch a new content and update this September, confirming the removal of the gotcha system where players have spent their money. As revealed by Nintendo, it will be replaced by a new system of Spotlight Shop where players will be purchasing rubies directly and the buying of pipes will be then omitted. Okay, it has also been revealed that the, la the latest update, Battle Mode, will be inaugurated in the game it will be featuring a blend of new tracks inspired by real cities of the world including tokyo new york and paris along with some classic traits this is very interesting mm -hmm. and i have a theory i think this is what happened i think uh mario kart tour did really good and nintendo was just looking at their numbers because you know this is like a dna like made yeah, like they just kind of let them do whatever. And I think Nintendo was looking at their finances and they said, well, where'd this three hundred million dollars come from? <laughs> and they saw it was coming from Mario Kart Tour and they were like, that's mm -hmm. weird. We didn't know it had that many downloads. Like, what's where's that money coming from? And they're like, oh, well, it doesn't have a lot of that many downloads, but it had, you know, the people who do download yeah. it, they're spending a lot of money on loot boxes and stuff. What's a loot box? <laughs> and they see that, you know, this game has that predatory gotcha element. And they were like, that's cool. That yeah. We made a lot of money, but uh, maybe it's Let's not really, stop. it's not very Nintendo of us to, to, yeah. to be, uh, you know, gam promoting gambling. So that's, I think they got rid of it after that. Yeah. That's what, that's my theory on, on why uh, the game is doing so good. And also they're getting rid of the gambling. <laughs> Uh, oh, Kjax is, if I recall correctly, Belgium. Uh, they had to remove loot boxes or get banned from the country. That's a thing. Yes. Yes, that is. Uh, we did hear about that. Uh, anyway. Uh, so I just thought that was a little fun thing. I didn't think Mario Kart Tour was doing that great, but apparently it is. Apparently it's doing very well. What's this about Amazon buying EA? All right, I'll race through this real, real quick. Uh, last week, there was rumor going around that, uh, based on USA Today report, that Amazon was going to make an offer to buy Electronic Arts. Uh, however, that has been retracted with the journalist behind the article also expressing doubt over its accuracy. The original report was updated multiple times in the hours after CNBC disputed its reporting, slowly but surely stepping away from its fairly explicit declaration that Amazon would make an EA would make EA an offer. Earlier today, the uh, GLHF, the gaming esports outlet and content partner of USA Today's For the Win, ran a version of this story on their website that violated uh, the editorial standards regarding the use of unnamed and unvetted sources. The page now reads. Kirk McKean, the journalist behind the article, also said on Twitter, if you get something wrong in games journalism, it's a bit like when you work behind a bar and drop a pint glass uh, and everyone cheers, except instead of cheering, they chuck more pint glasses at you. He continues. Also, CNBC said it has CNBC said it isn't happening today, which isn't the same as it isn't happening. Uh, and if I turn out to be wrong, then I was wrong. It happens. It's the first time it's happened to me with a report like this, but it was bound to happen eventually. So basically, there's this big rumor going around that Amazon was going to make a bid to buy EA. Uh, and it turns out that as of right now, that is not the case because the sources uh, cited were not uh, properly vetted. Uh, so the story was retracted. However, if I may give a, a Will Wolf editorial, yes, on please. This, I still believe that this is a possibility that Amazon is going to buy EA for two reasons. Absolutely. One, while back, EA said that they were interested in being acquired or bought out by another company. This is something that we talked about on the podcast. Uh, second, Amazon's in house gaming division uh, notoriously kind of sucks because Amazon 
does not know how making video games works. And right. they, they've been trying for years to make their own AAA in-house studio for their cloud streaming services. And nothing really seems to work because they don't know how video game development works. So the idea of them buying Electronic Arts, the second biggest uh, third-party game studio in the world, uh, makes a lot of sense. It would be what both companies would want and it would solve both of their problems. So I very much see the possibility of Amazon buying EA still out there. And if it doesn't happen soon, it will probably happen sometime within the next year. Uh, I agree. I think it's very possible. I think that the technology that Amazon has, uh, they could really benefit from having a huge, uh, uh, you know, all the a huge publisher like EA that has all of these developers uh, on. Yeah, uh, Amazon could hugely benefit. Imagine uh, making all sports games um, exclusive to Luna. Imagine that. They're literally buying like every yeah. the rights to every fucking sports game, basically. Yeah. Uh I don't think this would spell the end of like EA games on like other consoles and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. But um I mean how enticing would it be if you're subscribed to Prime, you get every Madden game day one. Yeah. You get Battlefield day one. Or you, you link it to Jedi your Survivor. Like, Xbox or something. Yeah. That'd be crazy. I, I, and I think if anybody has the money to do it, it's Amazon. So they, I think oh, they, they would. Uh, I think it makes a lot of sense. It it will, of course, make your Prime subscription go up again. Oh but, yes. Yeah. Oh, of course. Uh, anyway, uh, more news. Sony is making doing mobile stuff. After three decades on focusing on console gaming, both uh, set top and handheld, Sony is taking aim at mobile phones. This week, Sony Studios head Herman. Uh, Holst announced in a post on the company's official blog that it will dedicate some of its business efforts to the newly created PlayStation Studios mobile division. Sony's move also comes with news that it has purchased mobile games developer Savage Game Studios. Mobile gaming, of course, the massive market spending on mobile games is expected to reach $136 billion this year. Uh, that's more than a half of the entire gaming market. Sony, long dependent on its PlayStation consoles, clearly wants in on that. By developing an actual mobile division, it seems the comp the company is finally making a legitimate push into the mobile market. Although, curiously, Savage Game Studios hasn't published anything yet. Yeah, I was just so on we'll their site. What... They have nothing there. Yeah. Uh, the move comes at a time when PlayStation 5 consoles are still madding, madding maddeningly madden uh hard to find and getting more expensive uh also the company's ps plus subscription service is still playing catch up with microsoft's game pass uh while playstation says it doesn't plan on putting console games on the back burner it clearly wants to lean on into where the money is for this foreseeable future that's mobile so i am surprised they haven't done this sooner uh yeah i mean they yeah you can like play streaming stuff on the phone and supposedly it's good i haven't really tried it but i heard it's pretty good mm -hmm. and i would like to try it for like a uh, freaking death stranding um but yeah they should just straight up have some games i mean like square enix does it you know yeah maybe they could benefit from uh, purchasing square enix <laughs> uh i know this this isn't the first time sony has like tried to like put a foothold in the mobile space they've had like some like promotional games for like uncharted and whatnot on ios and android uh there was of course the xperia play phone the infamous playstation phone that nobody bought um they they had like playstation minis which were essentially uh iphone games on psp and vita so they have like dabbled in it, but this is like the equivalent of when Nintendo bought DNA and started putting like Mitomo and uh, Super Mario Run on iOS. This is like the big push to like 
get their foot in the door. I just wonder if it's a little too late because yeah, mobile gaming makes a lot of money, but like it doesn't really have the same market mind share that like console gaming has anymore. I think uh, a lot of people are going to start pushing into, I mean, they have been already. People have been pushing into mobile, but I think mobile is, uh, you know, you gotta, you're already getting all the gaming people you can get, you know, uh, to yeah. buy a console. The gaming industry is so big. The next step is to try to uh, lure them in with what they already have, which is a phone. Yeah. Uh, anyway, real quick, Prey Dev didn't want to call the game Prey. Yeah. Uh, so, released in 2017, Prey shares its name with a little-known 2006 first-person shooter developed by Human Head Studios. Despite sharing uh, very few similarities with that game, it was billed as a reimagining of the Prey intellectual property, which was held by publisher Bethesda. But creative director and Arcane founder Rafael Colantonio uh, said that the name was forced on the team who didn't oh, like it. That's not I good. was a little at odds with some of the management uh, with the decision of calling the game Prey. Um, Cole Antonio said, uh, speaking with the Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences, that was a very, very hurtful to me. I didn't want to call the game Prey and I had to say hey, I wanted to anyway in front of journalists. I hate to lie and those are sales lies, not personal lies, but it still felt bad. I had to support a message I did not want, not only for me, uh, but nobody in the team wanted to call this game Prey. Our game was had nothing to do with Prey, but it was kind of like Prey 2006 in a way. I am grateful <laughs> that the company will give me the means to make a game and trust me, uh, my ability uh, with so many millions of dollars. But there is a bit of the artist, the creative side that is insulted when you tell your artist your game is going to be called Prey. You go like, I don't think it should. I think it's a mistake. <laughs> Uh, so long story short, the 2017 game Prey developed by Arcane Studios, uh, owned by Bethesda has nothing to do with the 2006, uh, Human Head Studios game also called Prey, but because Bethesda bought the rights to the name Prey and they wanted to put it on a game, they thought, Hey, your game's going to be called Prey, even right. though it has nothing to do with this other game called Prey and Arcane did not like that one bit. Yeah, it doesn't. I'm, I'm, I'm realizing now. I've never even looked at that 2006 Prey yeah. outside of 2006, <laughs> and I'm looking at it now. And yeah, it has as completely, yeah. The, none of this stuff is in the new Prey. It, for those of you who don't know, the 2006 game Prey, developed by Human Head Studios, uh, you play as a Native American uh, in a like alien world. Uh, and you, the big thing is you have a portal gun and this was slightly predates portal mm. uh, a little bit. It doesn't work as well as it does in portal, but it, like that, that was the big thing for it. Uh, the 2017 game prey is system shock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this is not similar at all. Fun fact. Yeah. I played system shock uh, like two days ago, three days ago. Oh, the, uh, the remake. Yeah, it's okay. How is it? It's fine. <laughs> I've always wanted to play System Shock too, because everyone's like all the like the the Uber nerds are like, that's the greatest game of all time. Shodan. Well, there's the no, Shodan reveal. There is no like, way it's the greatest game of all time. I and like okay, the Shodan reveal would have been cool back in 1997, but that, what is that's that? not going to be cool to me because in System Shock one, the villain was Shodan, and a rogue AI, and in System Shock two it's revealed that Shodan survived. And like when you, when like that reveal happens, it's like a big deal. Mm -hmm. It's third. It's like 20 years since that it's been out on the internet. I know what the reveal is. So that's not going to have the same impact on me as it would have had. I played it back then. It's also like been done. <laughs> like, yeah, like, like it's been a, like if I played that now, it would, yeah, I wouldn't have, I would have seen it coming. It's fucking it's the whole idea of the first system shock. Like I've only played two seconds of it at the convention, but you yeah. see the AI in the very beginning of the game. That's what the whole game's about. Uh, you could also just play Bioshock because that's also from Ken Levine. Basically the same thing. Right. 
Anyway, Halo Infinite split screen co op mode quietly scrapped. Goodbye. We're losing stuff yes, from Halo uh, Infinite because they gotta finish the parts of the game that matter more. A major Halo Infinite update has quietly snuck in the announcement that split screen co op mode will not be happening at all. While players can get excited about the latest Halo Infinite uh, fall winter roadmap, the video accompanying the announcement from 343 Industries buries some not so great information within it. At the 11 minute 46 second mark in the video, 343 head of creative Joseph Staten looks to the camera and says, we had to make the difficult decision not to ship campaign split screen co-op and take the sources that we would use on that and go after this list and all of these other things. Uh, the list Stanton is referring to includes cracking down on cheaters, increasing stability and polish, uh, sorting out multiplayer performance issues and more. So the 30 minute long video adopts 343 Industries more recent push for transparency when it comes to updates and realistic roadmaps, something that players seem to be welcoming with open arms. However, it's disconcerting that something we've been long promised has quietly been canceled in the middle of a lengthy update. So... Uh. That, yeah. I mean, I mean, I understand because like nobody plays split screen anymore. Like, like I wish that split screen or couch co-op. I wish that couch co-op was more of a thing in a lot more games. Yeah, um, it's unfortunate that it's taken a backseat in a lot of games. Uh, Halo is not. I mean, it's like split screen is synonymous with Halo, but. Yeah. It's it's we're not there anymore. I, I I think that Halo is not a game that you play on the couch with a friend because split screen was cool back in the day, but since everybody now has their own device and 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 the internet, uh, it's much better just playing a shooter that way, so you don't lose half of your screen. Well, to be clear, it still has uh, local split screen multiplayer. It just doesn't have split screen co op. Oh, uh, yeah. So deathmatch is still there, but like campaign co-op isn't i think part of the problem was because this is the first halo that's you know technically an open world so having a split screen open world game must have been incredibly challenging for them to the point when they're like where they're probably just like fuck it we can't do this anymore yeah. um it still sucks and it's disappointing because split screen co-op was like a major bullet point for like all halo games yeah, being um, able to go and through so uh, the campaign with somebody sitting next to you would be kind of cool. Yeah, and it's you know something that people were looking forward to since they promised it uh, way back when the game was announced. They said it was going to come at launch, then they delayed it from launch, uh, and then then that was just it's gone. <laughs> yeah, that that's uh, that's a little sad, but I mean, yeah, uh, Halo's been just riddled with issues lately it, it's it's yeah. it's it seems to be the final product seems to be they're just shedding features you know this is another thing yeah. i mean it's i want to say that it should have been delayed but it was already delayed like a lot so like yeah. they really didn't have a choice but to release it in the state that it was in and i know like people it's the article like the article said like people are happy 343 is being much more transparent uh, with its news and releases, but at the same time, like people are like tired and done of like three four three industries and their handling of the Halo property. Like I think at this point, a lot of people are ready for either Microsoft to like step up their game and like really like buckle down and like make a good Halo game, no matter how long and no matter how much money they spend on it, or give the game to somebody else. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of that seems to be the topic on Twitter right now is uh, who would be better to develop Halo or what what could yeah. they do with the Halo franchise? Metascension in the chat says, are fewer people overall playing split screen couch co-op or are we just playing less because we're old slash not in college anymore? That's true, too. I know. I think uh, fewer people are playing it because if it was popular, people would be it would be in games. Well, no. No, because Nintendo has proven that like people will go like and play uh, couch co-op. Uh, every time I'm at my friend's house, we're either playing Mario Kart or Smash Brothers. I think the thing is, they realized that what makes more money, 
selling one copy of a game and having all your friends come over to play four player split screen or selling four copies of the game. So you all have to go out and buy a copy of the game and go to your separate homes and play it on your separate consoles. All right. I want to make a distinction here. There's split screen and there's couch co-op. They can be two different things. Yes. Couch co-op, I think, is great and has to happen and is a thing that needs to happen. If if we're talking about like a game like Halo that has split screen or you can just play it on your own individual devices, and you invite me over to play Halo, I'm going to be like, I'll just stay home and play it. Because like <laughs> split screen is not as good as having your own dedicated monitor. But if you're talking about right. something like Smash Brothers or a game where everybody's on screen at once anyway then yes, couch co-op is incredibly important. And there are some games now that just straight up don't, they could easily give you that option. Like it wouldn't impede the gameplay at all. Yeah. But they just don't because, uh, I don't know, they just would rather have it it's, work online. It, it's local multiplayer versus online multiplayer is what the argument is. Yes. And I think that local multiplayer, even if it's split screen, Still has a place in this world. It, it still can be a good time uh, for four people. Um, I think the problem is that game companies realize they stand to make more money if they push online multiplayer because then if you want to play with somebody, you both have to have a copy of the game. I agree with everything you said except for the fact that split screen has a place in this world. <laughs> I think split screen... Uh, only has a place for people who are in a bind. Like I've been in a bind before without like a device and I needed to play a game and it's just like, oh, just just plug in and have it work. I think it was like a random Call of Duty game that I learned didn't have split yeah. screen all of a sudden. I was like, what the fuck? It's Call of Duty. It's that split screen for years. What Am I that old? But uh, for the most part, I think that uh, split screen is the thing that you're going to be telling your kids about. <laughs> well, by the same token, like TVs are bigger now than they've ever been. Yeah. So everybody has more room, like more individual space to see what's going on in their individual screens. Mm -hmm. So split screen probably makes more sense now than it did in the 360 era or even the, the PS4 era. Yeah. So if you if you do four player split screen on a 4K TV, each person's getting a 1080p screen. Yeah, which is cool. And if it's a big enough screen, that's pretty cool. But if you're doing side by side two players, that sucks. You're getting yeah. a vertical readout of the screen that count me out. Unless it's horizontally split top and bottom. That might be a little better. If it's like yeah. ultra wide, that might be cool. Yeah, no, that's that's generally the way to go. Anybody who does vertical split screen, especially for like a shooter, is an insane person. I I don't want to know who they are. I don't want to know them. But I just think the use case for this is so small, especially these days, that companies just don't see the financial benefit in including this in their game. And Halo yeah. wanted to be so feature rich that this would have been cool. This would have been like a cool little, hey, we can do this. And Halo yeah. can do a lot of weird stuff that like a lot of other games can't. A lot of weird technical stuff. Um but yeah, this is, I, I understand the decision to scrap this one thing. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, we got to plow through the rest of this shit. Okay. Uh, Sonic Frontiers got a new three minute explainer video, which probably should have been how Sega started this whole can't thing. Did we see that? <laughs> did we talk about this on the show? Because I remember saying no. that this was the coolest this game has ever looked. No, this, uh, this happened. When did this got, when did this come out? September 1st. September 1st. Yeah. So we missed this. Am but I yeah, thinking of something Sega else released... Yeah. I forgot what it was. It was another trailer. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen this one then. Yeah. But this video is it's three minutes long and it actually explains everything that's happening in the game. Like it spells it out for you. Okay. It breaks down the various features and gameplay flow of Sonic's latest adventure. Uh, offers the clearest explanation of yet of how things will unfold uh, come its launch on November 8th. Okay. Like, uh, it explains the world he's in, the different levels he can go into, all his new moves, uh, things like that. 
<laughs> yeah, I remember we were very confused with all of these yeah. mechanics that they introduced. We were like, I don't understand how this is going to yeah. end up being a thing. Uh, the gist is that having somehow found his way uh, into a strange dimension known as cyberspace, very 90s of you, Sega escapes to Kronos, one of the Starfall Islands where players will embark on Frontiers' nonlinear open zone gameplay. Here, high speed exploration and puzzling are the order of the day, with successful puzzling unlocking items that'll increase Sonic's power and defense and reveal new parts of each map. Eventually, players can take on bosses to earn portal gears. Portal gears! Uh, that'll grant access to cyberspace stages remixed versions of classic 2D and 3D Sonic levels and completing challenges here rewards vault keys, unlocking chaos emeralds and opening the next open zone. Uh, that's pretty much how the game unfolds, albeit with a few extra wrinkles, including combat system built around skill trees, letting players unlock and level up different abilities. Single button auto combos are available for those who want to keep things simple. Plus Sonic side loop, which surrounds enemies and objects with a band of light with varying results. Um, very interesting. So uh, I also think that they added a lot. They, they're showing a lot more uh, environments too. We're getting a yes. lot more taste of other environments, which is also very scary because we all, for a long time, we only saw the like hilly Unreal Engine Four look at environment. Yeah, we we had gotten quick looks at like the Green Hill Zone and like the the Sky Sanctuary Zone, mm -hmm. but like, but it was made out to be like bonus levels and stuff. Right. And this makes it look to be more like an actual part of the game to help you progress. Right. Uh, so. Mecha Dragon gave us 100 bits and said, apparently a new song drops for Sonic Frontiers today as well. A Japanese song at that. I will have to listen to it. Yeah. They usually have some bangers over at yes. Sega. Yes. They uh, do. Real quick, new Metal Gear Solid remasters? Metal Gear. Uh, yeah, rumors were bounding around uh, last week. That Konami may very well be its on its on a on its way to a bit of a resurgence. Uh, after partially stepping away from the console market, the publisher is apparently looking to revive major IPs like Metal Gear, Castlevania, and Silent Hill. Uh, the news comes from VGC and subsequently backed by known leaker Aesthetic Gamer. Aesthetic Gamer states that the possibility of new remaster collection is hundred percent true, and that the oh. three games Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid Two: Sons of Liberty, and Metal Gear Solid Three: Snake Eater will be available separately or as a bundle. He also suggests that the collection is planned for higher res consoles, which may rule out the Switch, but also states that the collection will come uh, will come to pretty much everything when responding to a user question. To play devil's advocate for a moment, however, we need to remember that the official Metal Gear Solid Twitter page recently stated that it's planning on resuming sales for MGS titles that were temporarily delisted. This includes current remasters of 2 and 3, Along with Snake Eater 3D on 3DS, one ought to wonder why Konami would even bother if it's planning to release a brand new collection. Some things you ponder, perhaps. So, um, Kojima posted on Twitter the so, so we knew that these games were delisted probably because of some weird licensing issue. Yeah, it's because it was like weird, weird 10 years issue. to the day or something like that. Yeah, it's a weird licensing issue that they Konami was trying to sort out and yeah. they sorted it out. So, they're going to be put back on avail they're gonna be made available again pretty soon kojima put on twitter something about how uh he used a lot of documentary footage and stuff and that was an issue that was a huge licensing yeah. issue and he said now i don't have those licensing issues because i'm friends with like the licensing office or something like that yeah um so he might have helped work this out yeah i'm a little hopeful for a remaster i really want an, a metal gear Solid one remaster i think that yeah. would get so many more people in interested in the franchise Absolutely. what i think is one of the best franchises in gaming yeah i think i think it would be awesome to, uh not only for us to play these games again but for you know newer audiences to play these games for the first time because they are three of the most interesting and unique games not only in the stealth action genre but in video games in general all right last thing real quick cyberpunk is getting dlc it is get it. This is the first big expansion to the game. It's called Phantom Liberty. It's coming next year. The uh, it sees the return of Keanu Reeves as Johnny Silverhand. Uh, the first trailer doesn't offer a ton of in the way of details. Uh, players can uh, take control of V again, 
uh, as they take an oath to faithfully serve the new United States of America. Uh, what was the, the the main topics? Okay. Phantom City will be available for Google Stadia, PS5, Windows PC, and Xbox Series X, but not for PS4 and Xbox One versions of the game. The game's new 1.6 patch, known as the Edge Runners update, will be the final update for the PS4 and Xbox One versions of Cyberpunk 2077. The Edge Runners update is named for its tie-in to the Netflix animated series coming next week. So it will not be available on previous consoles. Interesting. It will not be available. It will not be available on these systems it was originally marketed to be played on. <laughs> and I didn't I don't see anything about Series S, which is a little concerning. Yeah. I think it'd be fine on Series S. Yeah. Because that's just a just a lower resolution. So- yeah, it should be the only difference. But I, but, I I need confirmation that it works on the Series S. God. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's weird. Uh, I wonder how it is now. I can't imagine it's fixed. Like I can't imagine. I've it's heard. Like I've heard good it's now. significantly better. Mm-hmm. But that said, I I still don't have a next gen system, so I'm afraid to start it up again. And I'm kind of mad that they're not releasing uh, this expansion for previous gen consoles. Yeah, it's because kind of a slap in the face. Game, this game was marketed as a PC, PS4, and Xbox One release. People bought this game with the intent to play it on a PS4 or an Xbox One. And now, all this time later, if you still want to play the game... You now have to spend an additional $500 to play it right. I don't think that's cool. I don't think that's fair. I think that is honestly kind of disgusting. And it it really like makes me not want to play the game again, even though I was giving this game so much of the benefit of the doubt beforehand. Yeah, it's it's and and people like you bought the game and and like they should be giving you free shit for having to go through the trouble of yeah. playing their shitty game. <laughs> Especially like when did, when did it come out? Like 2019? Years ago. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it took them this long to, you know, I, like, I understand they delayed everything and like, it, it was like a real, like, you know, shit show trying to get it working. And like, I appreciate all the free updates and like everything they did to try to make it work. But the fact that you're not even trying to get, you know, the expansion that you promise players. Yeah. Onto, onto, you know, systems that people already have is like ridiculous. Anyway, uh, that's all the news that we have today, guys. Yeah. Uh, We're running a little late, but we have to. We, we got to it to do this. Yeah, we have to make time for this. Is this the thing? Quit of the week! Yeah, Quit of the week! Quit of the week! All right. All right, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a new setup here. Um, anyway, I have two here, but I think I'll show you this one. This one's worth showing. Uh, this is by uh, Lil Soundproof. It says Pokemon in a nutshell, and it says the gameplay, and it's just a guy mashing A on a Joy-Con, <laughs> and then the lore, and it's uh, all yeah. this shit happening, and it made me realize why people play Pokemon. Like I totally agree with the first one i say this all the time that pokemon just mash an a it's a lot of that Mm -hmm. not even a lot of decision making just a lot of blasting through dialogue and stuff the second one though the second little little thing here the lore uh it doesn't really like it like i i'm not really that interested in it but i understand why people would suffer through mashing a so much just to deal with that never underestimate the power of lore Mm -hmm. lore is like what really gets people going with like you know the the franchise and stuff that they love and maybe even interested if, in destiny yeah even if lore is mostly bullshit <laughs> most lore is unimportant and kind of stupid and bullshit but it's there the other one that i thought was funny 
I'll just post it anyway. Uh, by Cat's Dogma. Uh, it's a uh, it's a mountain goat jumping between like <laughs> cliffs, and it says the amazing feats of mountain goats. And they said they're called hooves, dummy. That's funny. <laughs> anyway, now we'll talk to you guys very quickly. Yes, sorry when people will have comments on uh the Wolf Den podcast from two weeks ago oh, over yes. on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. Uh, also, Jin Wong, thanks for the two months. 18 months, love the content. Thanks, Jin Wong, for being here. Uh, all right, so from less, from two weeks ago, we got yes. Trevor Ralph, who says, Hi, guys, question for you. How do you play older systems on a modern TV? What upscalers, adapters do you use? I've been looking into Keiko upscalers, and I was wondering if you had any advice of trying to hook up a GameCube and PS2. Thanks. Well, for those, there's specific things you can get. Yeah. Uh, so for a GameCube, uh, of course, we highly recommend the Eon uh, GCHD adapter for that. It just plugs right in. And it's a bit you can pricey. It. it is so, a bit so pricey, the, but you're the, getting what you pay for. The Keiko is in, is in OSSC. I, yes. I didn't put uh, the two together. I, I should specifically note that the Keiko OSSCs are... The OSSC is open source. That's what the OS stands for. But Keiko did not license the open source properly. Open source does not mean public domain. And they just took it and start slapped their name on it and started selling it. So don't buy a Keiko upscaler if you support open source projects. Get it from like directly from the original retailer. Um anyway, oh the OSSC is like it's good, but it's kind of complicated to use. So I would say if you're interested in something like that, maybe look at the Retro Tank 5X because that'll right. upscale your systems pretty well. And it has like all the ports you need for all the systems. So so I like an upscaler if you want to use one device for a bunch of stuff. Um, But it's not the best way for, for if, if you want the best quality out of each system, you kind of got to specifically upscale each system. And the way to yeah. do that on a GameCube is something like the Eon uh, uh, GCHD. Um, for PlayStation 2, they have an, they have a freaking uh, adapter thingy, don't they? Like, like I, I think a Hyperkin well, has a thing. Yeah, I would say with PlayStation 2, your best bet as of right now is getting uh component cables for them it could be like you know third party and stuff hd retrovision makes good uh component cables for playstation 2 getting those and then hooking them up to your tv if your tv supports component cables uh or connecting them to uh the retro tank so so having a Something like an OSSC, the the only issue that I mean, it's still great. It's still a good thing to to have. Yeah. My biggest problem is that like if you are just pl plugging red, yellow, white cables in there, uh, your the the pixels aren't perfectly crisp, and that bothers me a lot. Um, yeah. And GameCube and PS2 is a little more complicated to upscale than some of the older consoles, but uh, basically anything you do, y'all be fine. Uh, yeah. Daniel Misner says, excuse me, Wolf Brethren, I'm 30 years old, a lifetime Pokemon fan, and a fan of Mini Coopers. <laughs> Ever since the new Mini <laughs> graced the underrated 2003 Italian Job remake, this news was made for me. Will, people don't steal Minis out of respect. Also, <laughs> I'm on my second Mini Cooper myself, and I love the Princess Bride. Self-admittedly, a weird guy. <laughs> <laughs> I will give it to you. The Italian Job remake was a little underrated. I like that movie. I thought that was a good. I thought that was a good movie. I I I think that was the most beautiful comment we've ever gotten. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think uh, he, he told a little story there, and then and yeah, at his own expense. <laughs> Anyway, Boy Wonder says, Will, I know you said you are kind of excited for Gotham Knights, even though you can play it, but are you scared? It's just maybe not going to be a good game. <laughs> With some of the gameplay trailers and character trailers, I'm scared it's just not, it just might not be, it might just be an okay game and not even a good game. I'm keeping my expectations in check and I know it's not going to be an Arkham game, but how are you feeling about it? 
Wait. Wait. Did you bump your mic? Why are... He's... You're muted or something. What did I... Nah. <laughs> but I'm not. No, no, you're good now. You're good now. You're good now. Okay. Uh, what I was saying was, the good thing about not rushing out to play the game when it comes out is just letting other people play it for you and then seeing what they have to say. You know, I get to read reviews. I get to see if it's worth my time or not. Um, yeah, I don't think it looks very good. I mean, I kind of got burnt down on Arkham games, so. Yeah, I mean, it looks different enough that I'm willing to, like, you know, give it the benefit of the doubt and, like, be open-minded for something new. It just looks so weird, you know? It's not what you expect from a Batman game, even right. though batman's not it he's in it you know he's gonna he's gonna show up i guarantee you um jake the spud says oh wait the name actually changed i can't support this change yeah i changed it on uh on, on, on youtube sorry dude yeah i, think uh, I, I know Go bob on. 94 says are you guys ever going to release a wolf den satisfy grip no that would definitely push me to finally getting one uh no uh we were working on doing a case but uh, I don't know what happened. <laughs> anyway, uh, now we're in the chat, but also LJWVU, thank you for the 14 months. Here's to another entertaining month, fellas. Well, thank you. And also Rock thank and you. Bow for 26 months. Meep, this is all. Thank you. <laughs> all right, now we're in the chat real quick because I got to yes. leave because I'm hungles. Okay. And also there's a dog here I got to play with. Uh. Uh, I thought I just saw one. Uh, LJWVU. I have the Rubbit GameCube adapter, and I really like it. I believe that's another alternative to the GCHD that you don't have to plug into the component port of a GameCube because not all GameCubes have a component port. That is, I think, isn't it like the Hyperkin? It's just a cable. Uh. I got to look because I know they make upscale. It's like it's not it's not Eon. It's another company. They make upscalers for the GameCube that you don't have to plug into the component port. Yeah, I don't uh, know about this. I, 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 I've never heard of this. Oh, no, it does require the component port. Never mind. Never mind. Uh, does it count as an accessory? I don't know. Anyway, uh, no banana suits. Thanks for the prime. Get your ass back to New York. Uh, I will be tomorrow. <laughs> I've literally, Alex, I literally know. stayed here an extra day so I could see this dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. Alexina, two thousand and one. I wonder if someone could bribe Satisfy to make a PS Vita grip. That'd be weird. I, I had a grip for the Vita, and it was a great way to play it. But I feel like the offset yeah. handle the Satisfy grip would be even better interesting scott the sloth thanks for the 200 bits are either of you guys into lord of the rings and have you ever watched rings of power thoughts if you have watched it uh rings of power is that new amazon prime yeah lord of the Rings show that they spent one billion dollars on to make uh i have not seen rings of power yet i liked lord of the rings back in the day i thought it was a good movie trilogy um I like the Shadow of Mordor games. Not really what you consider like a diehard fan or anything, but you know, it's all right. I'm probably not going to watch Rings of Power because I don't have time for Lord of the Rings anymore. It's always yeah. so damn long. Yeah, I, I'm i not really into high fantasy. I liked the Lord of the Rings movies, but I wasn't like that big into it. And I really liked the GameCube games. <laughs> yes. I don't know why. That was a fun game. <laughs> but uh, yeah, then, yeah, I'm not... I'm not going back. They're too damn long, yeah. too convoluted. I can't do it. Uh. Hey, Wolf Brothers, do you think... Oh, chat move. Do you think Sonic Frontier's game will have the same backlash as the Deus Ex Machina game a few years back? Why? Also, heard yeah. that Epic might bring back an uh, Unreal Tournament. Oh, that'd be fucking crazy if they did that. That'd be cool. Um, Are you talking about Deus Ex 
Mankind Divided because that had like controversy, like loot boxes and stuff. And as far as we know, Sega isn't putting any of that shit in Sonic Frontiers. That would be weird. I, I don't know yeah. what controversy you're talking about, but I don't think I think Sonic Frontiers is going to have controversies from being a bad game. I think, I yeah. think it, I, I'm worried about how it's going to be when it comes out. Yeah. Are you go- are you gonna make a new dedicated video for the OLED switch burn in test? Maybe when it hits uh, a year, but I otherwise I I I I know people are interested in it, but it's just it's literally just me being like, here it is, it's still burning in, you know. Uh, I'm talking about the controversies when creators were getting copyright strikes. Oh, because like the music. I think you're, you're muted again. Do you know that you're muted again? <laughs> no, I don't know I'm muted again. Okay. Am I? You can't hear me now? I can hear you. You're good. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> Go back to New York so that maybe, maybe we don't have these problems anymore. Maybe you're... Oh, you're not even doing anything to come back? To, uh, no. <laughs> I didn't... I like... No, <laughs> I'm not doing anything to mute myself either. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, have you seen Hori's recently announced new split pad pro fit? Oh, did I not talk about the split pad fit? We talked, we about, talked it. about it last time we were here. Yeah, and uh, I'm getting one confirmed. So, yeah. Oh, oh, I think I'm, I think I bought, I think I pre ordered one from Play Asia, and I'm also, they're also sending me one. So I think I fucked up. Uh. Anyway, um, that's it. We're done. Thanks for hanging out. All right. Me. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf. And if you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Podcast. So go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you could do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on those respective platforms. Uh, hi. Uh, I will be back streaming on Thursday. I don't know what I'm going to stream. Splatoon comes out this weekend. I might stream that on Friday. I don't think I'm going to stream go. it early because I really don't care that much. Um, <laughs> I also got to put a video out. And I'm hoping to target Thursday, but I got a lot going on. So uh, mm. not sure I'm going to make it. But uh, yeah, I'll be back streaming on Thursday for sure. Uh, anyway, thanks for being here on this wacky, weird, wild one. Uh, and we'll see you later. Say hello to Jackson right now if you're here live. Uh, And goodbye. Bye.